All right, so um, we're ready for the reaction. We have our mold set aside. Um, I'm going to be pouring my soap in the kitchen on the floor, so if I make a mess, it'll clean my kitchen floor, which it needs right now. Um, my molds are prepped. I put that little plastic cap on this, and then I put this outside cap on there. So, I can't really see it anyway. But there's the wax paper. Uh, the palm oil needs to be melted with the olive oil. It's been a few minutes, so it's not as evident now. You can see the solid stuff in there. That's the palm. So I got my water heated up, hot water bath, so it won't get too hot on me. And I even have like this little silicone mold, little footballs, just in case I have extra stuff. I don't want it to go waste, and when it's time to pour, it's time to pour. So I'm going to use this stirrer right here. If I can find the button. Where is this button? Oh, yeah, it's on the top. Alright. All I want right now is just for it to become, you know, all liquid. So I'm just blending it, helping it out. And you may even see like some floaties in there, which I'm not going to worry about uh, cleaning out any floaties. But uh, sometimes oil's got stuff in it. It's made in a factory. Who would have guessed? There's a, a few types of, some people do, of soap making pro processes. Some people do cold process soap, which they rely on the kinetic portion of the chemical reaction, where it's just like what it does without adding energy. And I'm using a thermodynamic advantage just by adding heat. It just helps the reaction you know, push along faster. So we're going to let this heat up and I'll see you in a second. Alright, so this is pretty much all liquid now. And that's what I want. And uh, it's, it's pretty warm. Uh, it will get hotter and I will have to eventually turn this uh, heat down once, once it starts solidifying. They call it a trace when it's ready to pour. Uh, goes from a liquid to being like more like mashed potatoes and there's a lot of books on the subject you should definitely read up on it if you are interested in doing this um, learn it while you can so it is going to get loud I don't know if you can hear me over the blender so um, I'm just, just going to do it to it So I'm adding it in, in portions as you can see and just stirring it up a little bit. You can do this with all kinds of oils, but I'm just using vegetable type oils because that's uh, what I do. But you can use uh, animal fats and all kinds of stuff, but here we go. You really don't want to let air in here. If you let a lot of air in here, then it's just going to cause problems. Uh, not with like the chemical reaction, but it's just once it starts turning into more of a soap instead of an oil and water mixture, then uh, you don't necessarily want so many bubbles in there. It doesn't pour as easily. Although it could make your soap float. 
because that's how floating soap was made. They whipped it with a bunch of air. Alright, I'm going to continue to go ahead and pour the rest. It's doing fine. I don't know if you can see that film already building up on the top. That's um, the process is starting to work. I'm going to take uh, my lye container, put it in the sink, and run some water over it. This could take anywhere from you know 10 minutes to 20 minutes, depends on the kind of oils you're using. But let's keep it going. So, um, you can see this. It's very thick. Um, I'm going to call this trace. There's no specific thing that's trace or it's ready, but it's still hot. So, because it's hot, the viscosity is going to be uh, lower than when it cools down. Than when it cools down. So, um, all right, let's see if I can do this quickly. I'd like to do this a lot more quickly, but I gotta deal with the camera issue, as many of you are used to. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright, so here we go. Uh, this will stay hot probably all night long. It'll retain some heat and the chemistry is not done yet, but this is hot and it still has uh, unreacted sodium hydroxide so it can burn you chemically and possibly even thermally, so be careful. My camera stand just shifted, so I didn't notice, so I don't know how, how much of that you're going to see. But, uh, I mean, you can see it. It's really thick pudding consistency. That is probably the best way to describe it. And I got about this much left. Um, I'm just going to leave it in there. I'll mop my floor with it tomorrow by the time it hardens, maybe a couple of days. So I'm going to let this sit. Um, I do have some on my hands and I can already feel it tingling and burning. Um, so I'm going to have to wash this off very soon. 
I'm going to let this sit overnight, maybe two days. I'm going to wait for it to harden and I'm going to cut it into bars. And uh, that'll be another video. I hope this was helpful. Um, I think it's a skill everybody should learn. It's, it's simple. Relatively safe. And, I don't know, maybe one day if SHTF or WROL and grid down situation, maybe you'll need to know how to do this. This is a uh, Kentucky Prepper 1792 sun and off and uh, yeah thank you for watching